Hello, so my job this week um, was to create a website for a recruitment agency and as part of that they wanted, um, naturally, a job listing uh, function but they wanted something a bit different, they didn't want it to look like every other site out there which appears to use a standard uh, list type format so I introduced them to this kind of uh, format and they lo absolutely loved it um, and then uh, behind the scenes I was kind of panicking a bit because uh, although I know how to use some of the advanced features of Elementor um, and I know about advanced custom forms, um, I'd never done a full kind of searchable, filterable, um, listing type job uh, like this. So um, it was a voyage of discovery and uh, this uh, hopefully fairly short video um, will just walk you through some of the challenges I faced and how I've overcome some of them. Not all of them, there's still some to go. Um, so what you can see here is kind of, it's not the finished article because I've not done, not done a lot of theming on the site itself, but in terms of the way um, the uh, job listing looks and works, uh, it, it's pretty cool. Um, I can filter by job types, categories, uh, I can reset the filters, I can sort by job title, um, all of which uses Ajax is pretty cool, so there's no page refreshes in there. Um, so let's dig straight in uh, with some of the uh, with the plugins that I'm actually using to make this magic happen. And from the top, we've got uh, ACF Front Form for Elementor. We'll look at that in a bit, but it enables you to create listings direct from a password protected uh, web page. Um, mindful that the client is going to be using this in their office. It won't be any one particular person doing it. It could be anybody. So it needs to be pretty robust and... Um, and I don't want to have to train people to do it. It needs to be intuitive. Uh, UX needs to be intuitive and, and the way that it works. So we've got ACS front, ACF front end form, advanced customer fields itself, um, not the pro version, just the regular free version. Uh, we've got post, custom post type UI, which you should be familiar with already if you're using advanced custom fields. Um, we've got Elementor custom skin. I don't know why they call it LE custom skin, but there you go. Um, and this plays a really important role, which I'll talk about in a moment. We have our Elementors, of course. Um, we've got uh, the other one down here that makes a big difference is this Search and Filter Pro, which is a paid plugin. Um, I think I paid $30, uh, $37 for it, um, but it's well worth it. It's uh, not restricted on the amount of times you can use it and stuff like that. So uh, there are basic uh, plugins we've used. The other one I'm using here, which will come into a short pixel image optimizer because we have to be a bit mindful of the fact that um, in the office people just throw images at it and uh, I've no way of knowing whether they're eight megabytes or what the aspect ratio is or anything like that. So I'm using short pixel image optimizer um, to uh, reduce the file sizes at the input, um, which um, which is always a good idea. So. Um, there are plugins and this is ultimately what we've created and I'll take you through the challenges. You may have spotted this already. I, I, I'm using um, uh, the Elementor custom skin, Ellie custom skin that we saw it, it is really important. It enables us to create a loop a bit like an Elementor um, archive template, um, just like an archive template in fact. It enables us to use that to create this loop of posts. Um, custom posts in this case. Now, if you straight out of the box with, with, with a regular blog type archive, um, you'll be able to have the featured image, you'll be able to have the title, you'll be able to have an excerpt and various pieces of metadata such as the date and the author and so forth. But when it comes to listings like this, you need more. You need um, to be able to display some of the actual data. Um, and here we see job title, job location, uh, job basis, and the salary. Um, and we've got to dig those out. And Elementor Custom Skin enables us to use any ACF field um, within this uh, within this loop, within this uh, archive. Um, so that's the part that it plays and you couldn't do this without it. Okay, the real big challenge we faced, um, I faced, was 
what happens when somebody puts in the wrong size image? Let's say somebody uses the front end form, um, which we'll look at. They use the front end form, they upload an image, but it's say um, in portrait format and that kind of thing. Basically, what we have is anything that pushes this box down, like a, a, a feasibly long job title, will push this down. As a result, you'll get this uh, misalignment of the various boxes, and we've got three uh, different alignments here which is messy it's horrible and probably the reason why most people go for some kind of more traditional list type presentation i didn't want to do that um, so we had to find a solution so uh, this is all about that solution i suppose and what i discovered was that there's a useful piece of css uh, which i shall try and find which is here um, I've put it into the um, customizer here because I couldn't get it to work properly by embedding it in the section or in the uh, element within Elementor. Um, so I popped it into the, uh, the customizer here. And this is it. This is, this is the one that deals with the job title. And what we've done is using the inspector, I've dug out the uh, identified the uh, particular element uh, that we're looking at and this by the way don't copy you, you won't copy and paste it but this will be different for yours but use the inspector to go and find out what it is and it's this bit here text overflow ellipsis and on the face of it very simple piece of css if you drop it into a if, if you uh, target a text field with it it should limit it um, limited by this max width it should limit it and anything it hides the overflow and then shows ellipsis three dots um, to show that there's more behind it. Um, I couldn't get it to work. I struggled and struggled and struggled with it until eventually I found that it only seems to work if you have display block, um, which uh, as soon as I did that, it, it, it worked. Inline block, all that kind of stuff didn't seem to work. The reason I've got margin auto in here is, is simply to recenter this because it seemed to want to go flush left for some reason which I've not really worked out um, and I put it the little bit of padding is obviously optional so this is the piece of CSS that does the work text overflow ellipsis overflow hidden important here white space no wrap um, otherwise it will it can split in little words and things like that so there it is um, and that's what enables us to do this so if you have a job now with a ridiculously long job title, um, it just truncates it. And instead of just cutting it off, it just gives you this nice little ellipse, which is pretty cool. It all works responsibly very nicely. Um, and what I've done also while I was at it, because all of these fields in these uh, boxes here are variable data. So, you know, I need to think about people that put in you know a huge great long line here of location so I've actually applied the same CSS uh, to all of those fields in there okay so that was that 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 sorted out the text but I was still struggling with um, what about the image I need to be able to cater for whatever anybody throws at this now I could have um, I probably I might still look at some CSS to make this a bit more elegant but all I did was in the um, in the template, in the loop template from Elementor Custom Skins, I simply selected the image and used a custom size, and I've actually used 1024 by 567 off the top of my head, which gives us a 169 aspect ratio. And if they throw the wrong image at it, um, it will squidge, um, but it will display okay, and um, they'll they'll soon learn, I guess. Uh, so. That was how to sort the image out. The button I just popped up there. Um, it actually sits above this image, but uses a negative top margin to bring it, uh, sorry, a top margin to, to bring it down. Um, as an overlay, uses absolute positioning. Um, so I think that's pretty cool. Um, the other thing I then had to look at was how to sort and uh, filter. And I looked at a lot of options, a lot of potential solutions, spent far too much time worrying about it and looking at, about, looking at it. And eventually um, I found this uh, Search and Filter Pro. So it did cost me, I think, $30, $39, $37, something like that. 
um, but it actually is really, really good. It's quite technical in the way you set it up, and I had to ask for a bit of support, uh, which was brilliant, actually. They came back to me within 10 minutes or so, uh, having actually solved the problem for me. Um, basically, this is that you drop a short code in, and behind the scenes, uh, we'll just have a quick look at that. Behind the scenes down here in Search and Filter, um, you set up various different ones. And I'll actually be setting up a different one also um, for the front page. So if we look at this, um, search in the following post type. If you want to do it my way, you can only select one post type, which is jobs as defined in advanced custom fields. Um, and you also want to set the results per page because that overrides anything um, in Elementor. Um, display results is where I was going wrong. You've got various options here as an archive, whatever. I thought it would be a post type archive, but it's not. It's custom. Uh, you then point it at the results um, page, if you like. This is just the uh, URL. And importantly, if you want to use Ajax to save those page refreshes, if you don't mind page refreshes, then you needn't worry about this bit, but if you want it to do it very smoothly, um, use Ajax. And you have to point the Ajax container at the container um, where it's got to go, and in this case, Elementor widget posts. Um, so having sorted that out with their help, uh, that was fine. The other thing we needed to do was look at pagination. Um, you can do infinite scroll with this as well, but I've got normal. Um, and you also have to pay, use that select, which is Elementor Pagination A. Um, so having done that, um, it all burst into life. And then you can do things like uh, you can introduce the fields you want. So sort order, category, reset button, um, a lot of other uh, fields you could put in there to sort by and so forth. But this is all I need, sort order, category reset button in the sort order, um, this hierarchical, so you can put different types of sort in there. It's all very clever actually and, and works extremely well. So there we go. Um, that was a quick journey through. Um, if you're not familiar with advanced custom fields, which I suppose is the key to all of this, there's lots out there to search and, and, and look at, but basically it gives you far more power than the standard blog post type posts um, that you've got within WordPress. So uh, there you go. I hope somebody will find this useful. Uh, any questions, um, shout and I'll try and answer them. I've still got some work to do on this, by the way. Um, we've got an add job field here, which I've got behind password protection. That brings up the field, uh, sorry, the form, and anybody could input a job from there. I've still got the big task on me now is to work out a way that they can actually edit a listing. And if anybody's got any ideas on that one, uh, do please shout because at the moment I am, um, I'm lost for ideas, but uh, like I say, if you know any, any better, if you've got any ideas for that one, please do give us a shout. Thanks for watching.